Today's guest is a popular young star who has been seen on Broadway in Spring Awakening, War Horse, and the Book of Mormon. Right now, he can be seen off-Broadway in the new rock musical Jasper in Deadland. Please welcome Matt Doyle. Thank you. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you because I have received many <laughs> tweets over my lifetime of angry people who are like, why isn't Matt Doyle on show people? I, and I'm, it's not that I didn't want you on show people. Here you are. Yes, finally. Here he is, everyone. Shut happen. up. Stop tweeting me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these people? I got tweets about it too, and I was like, I, oh, I can't like request that. You could have just showed up. You could right. just, if you show up any time, we'll just start rolling. We'll just start rolling our own show. We'll do <laughs> what, a series. Do, your, do these insane fans of yours have like a name? Is there like a nickname for? Oh God, no, I don't do have that. But like, like, like Cumberbitch or something like yeah, that. Like yeah, Cumberbitch. No I, no, I wish that'd be cool, but I don't know what it would be. I don't know. They're pretty passionate. Yeah. I know. No, I think it's anyone that was a part of the Spring Awakening days seems right. to have. A fan base like that somehow. It'd be funny if like the Spring Awakening fan base like carries into like your senior years. You know, oh, yeah. like you're a senior citizen and like. <laughs> I know, have like, a feeling it will yeah. because you know it's been what like eight years now and, yeah. and it's still happening. So you'll have like eighty year old ladies yes. like 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 after you. You're 80, you'll be like an 80, old eighty two year old guy. I hope so. That'd be awesome. <laughs> really, I would love sincerely that. Sincerely hope that. I'd love to see how that, what that turns into. Yeah. So I saw this Jasper and Deadland and actually. It's a really cool show, and it's like it's kind of nuts. Yeah, I mean, it's completely insane. Um, and it took me. I, I saw the show. I got on the subway. I headed home, and then like as I was getting off the subway, I realized, oh, like Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah. Jasper in Deadland. I'm. Oh, completely. That took, that took me a while. Yeah, I but mean, it's pretty clear that that's <laughs> what it is. It's kind of obvious. It's pretty obvious. Well, yeah. I mean, we're definitely going for that, and it is. It's a modern retelling of or the story of Orpheus and and Eurydice. And um, it mixes a lot of Greek and Roman mythology and inter intertwines it all. And, and Hunter Foster has just created this really, really, really wonderfully inventive book that yeah. you know almost feels like a labyrinth in a way. Uh -huh. and it's just this wild adventure through through the underworld or Deadland as we call it. And um, so, who is this Jasper? Jasper is a 17-year-old boy. Who, well, first of all, but just stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> How long? I mean, you you do you can pull off seventeen. Well, thank you. You're not seventeen. No. Because I've known you too long for you to be seventeen. No, I'm almost twenty-seven. <laughs> I know. But I I wonder like I wonder if you're gonna be like that guy who's like in his early forties. I like, have, I I have a feeling it might That'd happen. That'd be awesome. Well, I'll take it. I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're seventeen. Yes, I'm seventeen in this. Oh. Lord, um, I'm still seventeen, and he he you know he's um, he's a very troubled young young guy who his parents are going through a, a breakup right. and um, he just wants to get away from all the noise is what he says and um, he he loses his best best friend Agnes um, right. and so he goes after her into the underworld and in the underworld he meets all of these wild and strange creatures and people and um, and Ryan Scott Oliver wrote the book too yeah. as well as the unbelievable score yeah. I mean it's absolutely incredible this this contemporary pop rock score that just is completely unique in its own beast it's it's in it's something really special and it's like playing in like a church it's like a theater in a yeah. church yeah. on the upper west side it's like downtown theater uptown yeah. and <laughs> it's um, kind of cool yeah it's it's you know we have small budget and right. so we use a lot of fabric and ropes and, right. and kind of do the Nicholas Nickleby thing and right. and uh, or Peter and the Star Catcher you know right. it's it's yeah. got the same vibe and mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this cast is just absolutely phenomenal, and um, and our our director Brendan Ivy is is so smart and created something really magical on a very small budget. Right. Now you were in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Applause. Yay. Everyone applause. Um, <laughs> for what, like a year. Did, yeah, I did oh, a year. You did like a year run. Yes. Um, so what's it like going from a big budget Broadway spectacular to? The Uptown Church. The biggest adjustment, because our, our theater Uptown is, you know, it's in this big three-story dome, but the actual space is really small, right. and it's about 80 seats in the, in the house. And I, the first few nights, and I think you, actually you were there for one of the nights, I, I, I was still playing for 1,200 people. I was like, ah! just <laughs> throwing it out to the back of a house that's not there. And um, a friend of mine, a direct, director friend of mine came, and he was like, you need to calm the hell down. <laughs> so that's that's been interesting. It's just kind of, you know, I'm so used to needing to, you know, sell to the cheap seats and adjusting for a smaller space. Right. But also, 
just to work on something and create something from the ground up and, and do it in four weeks like we've done is, right. is really exciting and, and wonderful. Jo as, as crazy and sort of like, it has a very downtown aesthetic, Jasper and Deadland. Yeah. But it's actually one of the cleanest roles you've done. Yeah. Because, I mean, you had a Bible up your ass mm -hmm. in Book of Mormon. Yes. We've, we've all seen you uh, masturbate, however yeah. you want to say it. No, masturbate that, eight times that a week. Was your, yeah. um, that was Broadway your Broadway debut. debut. Yeah. Your Broadway Checking debut off. is that you got in the middle of a Broadway stage and, and just started playing with it. Yes, so that was the first thing I ever did on a Broadway stage, in fact, because it was the first role I even went on for in Spring Awakening. Right. And so my parents came and to that. Hi, Mom. You know, like, I'm making my Broadway debut tonight. Please come. And, yeah, I, that's what I did in front of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just, just, I'm going to masturbate in front of you now. How often did you have to rehearse that scene, and what was the rehearsal process? The like? rehearsal process for that? Um, for that scene? For that scene <laughs> Did was, you practice? Yeah, we had to, and actually, we got a lot of notes on like, okay guys, calm down, you know, like it's not, you've got to make sure that it's a realistic size. Oh, it's size. not up to here? Yeah, and, but then you're also like, well, I don't want to make it too small, you know? It's, it was absolutely, everything about rehearsing for that show was just like, I mean, for these 15 to 25 year old actors, just let your guard down completely. And I am probably, I, I have no concept of, of, you know, boundaries anymore <laughs> because of that <laughs> right. experience. Like the right. first day I practiced the beating scene with Krista Rodriguez right. and accidentally hit her with a stick and she had a welt for like three months. And, and then the next day I practiced the sex scene with like Leah Michelle and was just all over her. And, you know, so, so you, you did bang Leah Michelle. I know you understudied that role. I did. So you did actually yeah. get you got on top of Leah Michelle on Broadway. Right? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, continuing down the dirty path. Yes. I uh, looked you up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of nice YouTube of you. A lot of like singing of you, right? You have a yeah, lot of, you, a lot you, of uh, older singing of me. I think I went through a phase where I was like, put everything up, and <laughs> and now it's like, whoa, slow down. So do you know what the most viewed Matt Doyle YouTube? I think so. You probably do. It has a warning the, on it yeah, when you start playing the, it. The skivvies. It, um, no, 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 no. The number one is you is like bootleg of you doing I believe in of you. It's your ass. Oh no, I didn't know that. I don't think I've seen that. Okay, well, I've seen it. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. My like twenty year old ass. <laughs> your twenty year old ass is documented on YouTube. It's, it's a whole scene. Uh, how I so that it. is the number one. And I want to ask you also be on a safe same same topic. Let's do it. You took a shower last I year. Did. I did. Did you know I this was going to come, come up? up? I knew you'd bring. This I almost up. forgot to bring it up. No, this is brilliant. <laughs> you took a shower. I did. Yes. Uh, and uh, your boyfriend. My boyfriend took a picture. Ryan Steele uh, um, of Newsies and, fame. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we took this picture, but then we were like, wow, that's actually like a really beautiful picture. It and was I very think art it's actually artistic. Like it was a beautiful Very picture. artistic and, and very tasteful. Great lighting in your bathroom. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And I think this goes back to the Spring Awakening thing. So, you know, I made my Broadway debut masturbating on stage eight times a week. Wow, this interview has already gone in an interview. <laughs> I just interesting wanted to get it over direction. with. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I just don't have a lot of qualms about that sort of thing. Uh -huh. or, or, you know, I'd so. I also, like, yes, uh, you know, I got some responses, like, after I posted it. On Twitter. On Twitter. I was, you know who I was 20,000 people. Leslie Margarita. I was we drinking love with her. Video and, blogger. Um, Broadway.com video blogger. Yeah, Leslie so I'm Margarita. blaming Leslie right now. <laughs> and um, and I showed her the picture, and we had had a few drinks, and in an absolutely narcissistic fashion, I put it up. And um, I thought it was tasteful enough, but the world exploded the next day. And then my mother saw it because this, like, obviously she heard about it. Right, and right. Um, she was like, I, it's fine. Like, it's totally fine. So I got the mother test. Like, hey, oh, and that's fine. That's so fine. what's TMI for you? Uh, what, what crosses the line? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we also know a lot about, like, you came out. Yeah. And we know a lot about your boyfriend, yeah. Brian. And you're, you've I know, been I guess very I am a very and... public person. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, it says on my Twitter handle, love life, avoid bullshit. I think I have a problem with dishonesty, and, and I, I, I like to put everything out on the line because, you know, if, if you're honest about who you are, then nobody has to say shit behind your back. <laughs> right. Just be upfront right. with people. and right. And, um... You get more work done that way, and you enjoy life a lot more that way. Right. So I don't have a lot of um, boundaries. My my boyfriend is very reserved and quiet and wonderful and sweet and kind. So he kind of balances me out, I think. Now back to Spring Awakening for a minute. One thing that was really cool is that you got Spring Awakening because you were, you were just one of those guys that went on like the non-union, mm -hmm. like open call, right? Yeah. You just like got in the line and yep. 
you said I should be in this. Yeah, I went to. It was the, a hit off Broadway. It was after off Broadway. Yeah. Okay. I had stayed behind in the city. I, I'd come back from uh, a year of school in London and um, right. stayed behind in the city to try and make things happen. I was supposed to go to another university and decided not to, and um, you know, instantly was met with the reality of auditioning in New York without your equity card and it's or an agent and I don't really know what I was thinking but um, I got really lucky and was in the right place at the right time and Spring Awakening was actually looking for you know young fresh talent and non-union actors and I waited on that non-equity bench at the equity building for about nine hours got seen and then seven months later of callbacks Got the show. <laughs> and you were on the bleachers, right? Yeah. Didn't I first yeah. see you on the bleachers, like on the side? Yes. And Krista. Yes. Right? I was up there with them. The I was actually, the I started. did pretty well. I know. <laughs> really? Like, geez, Jen Damiano and Krista Rodriguez right, and Gerard Canonico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. They all, they've, that whole cast just yeah. has completely taken off. The first cast, the off-Broadway cast, mm -hmm. the onstage, you're in the bleachers, the onstage cast, yeah. they did it off-Broadway. They were sort of like immediate, like BFF. They were like they turned into like a real, yeah, like a thing immediately. That cast. Yes. W were they were they welcoming to all the you new guys when you all joined for the Broadway run, or was it kind of like, oh hey, you guys can yeah, you're gonna cover us? But oh no, they were. It, the whole thing though. I mean, you have to imagine a bunch of you know teenagers yeah. essentially right. just being thrust into this phenomenon overnight. Right. So it's not that there it was met with like. You know, I, I didn't really deal with a negative attitude from any of them, but we were all just crazy. Yeah. Like, absolutely insane. Like, musical theater kids put on Broadway in the biggest phenomenon in years. Right. And so we all lost our minds a little bit, I think, created little monsters out of all of us. To be that young yeah. and not realize that success like that is so fleeting. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we all eventually got the kick in the head that we needed later on and, and have mellowed out a great deal. <laughs> right. It's funny. We see each other now, and it's kind of like when you think back on those awkward moments in high school. Right, right. Like, oh, I can't believe right. it. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So in Book of Mormon, you got to be hilarious. Yeah. Which is another <laughs> skill. Like, hey, look, I'm funny. I love it. Do you it. think you're funny in real life? Um, no, not at all. I'm blunt, like really blunt. Uh -huh. And some people find that funny, but uh, a lot of people find it really annoying. And right. um, I, I... I, I grew up watching really broad comedy because when I was a kid, Jim Carrey was like, right. was it, you right. know? And so that just over the top, absurd slapstick comedy had made like a huge comeback in the 90s. And mm -hmm. those were my like comedic heroes. And people also really weird ones like Amy Sedaris, who did, you know, Strangers with Candy. Yeah. So I, I found myself like, doing a lot of Amy Sedaris and Book of Mormon, which didn't fit at all, and I had to catch myself, like, Elder Price, like, so strange. That's really funny. And, um, but it was fun, it was so great. I re I love broad comedy, and yeah. I love, my idols are like Bill Irwin and, and Jim Carrey, right. so right. just throwing myself all around the stage and acting like a fool was awesome. Let's talk about little Matt Doyle, can yeah. we? Were yeah. you Matt, were you Matt, Matthew? I was Maddie, Maddie. yeah, Maddie? I was Maddie. Maddie? Yeah. Like yeah, that, Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> so, little Maddie, you said that he was chubby with braces. Oh yeah. Are you exaggerating, or are you actually chubby? No, I chubby? actually, I, I like, I will give you pictures. I was chubby with braces, and went through this period where I just had like man boobs for days, <laughs> and still do. But you know, I try to keep them under wraps. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I went through a really, really awkward phase in middle school, and um, you know. I've said it before, but I think theater really like saved my life because I found a. So what what was that first community theater? I know where did you grow up? You grew up in Massachusetts and then San Francisco. Yeah, area? but I moved to San Francisco, and that's when I you know got chubby and awkward. Oh, you got awkward <laughs> in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, I uh, I went to middle school and high school out there, and. Uh, in Marin County. Okay. And um, I did with the wonderful Marilyn Izdebski, who still has a theater company out there and, and teaches uh, dance to just brilliant, brilliant kids. We just, uh, I went to San Francisco with my boyfriend and visited her. Um, I did community theater with her growing up and then. So you took like dance lessons with her? Oh, yeah, but was a disaster when it came to oh, dancing. Oh, really? Oh, still am, yeah. Anything else from that, from those days? Like, do you have photos of any of this? Or? I think my first, like, when I realized that I w was going to do it, yeah. I was 13 and I decided after doing a production of Anything Goes playing Billy that I was set. Like, this was it, you know? Just after experiencing Cole Porter, I was like, oh, 
I, this is what I want to do with my life. I mean, uh -huh. yeah. Back to your Twitter for a second. You are <laughs> Matt F. Doyle. Uh -huh. what did, what's the F stand for? Finnan, my middle name. Oh, how do you spell yeah. that? F-I-N-N-E-N. -N -N. Wow, I like that. Yeah, me too. Um, because <laughs> I hated it when I was a kid because everybody I'm was sure. like John or right. like Paul. And I was like, Finnan. I remember that everybody was trying to name their middle name on the school bus one day and come up with sports people that they were like, oh, your, your middle name's Michael, so you're Michael Jordan. Oh. And they asked me, and I was like, Finnan. And they all made fun of me. Is this when you were chubby with the braces around that time? Uh, it was around that time. Ooh. Yeah, close to it. And, um... <laughs> And I was so embarrassed, but like I you also, couldn't think of a great athlete. Named no, Penn. I also just didn't know athletes. There must be hundreds like, of them now. Real. <laughs> so yeah. So Matt F. Doyle, mm -hmm. Matt Doyle, yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, I looked this guy up. He's like some dude in San Francisco. He's contacted me a few oh, times. Really? Well, yes. He's like, this is getting ridiculous because <laughs> do people, so many people, oh, people like start tweeting him. Well, I know what your people are like on Twitter. They're so they're very like angry, aggressive at, angry? at times. <laughs> <laughs> They, they they enjoy making a point, and so they would like send him 50 tweets, and he'd be like, I, I don't know you people, and you're looking, I, I was not he won't just swap having with sex you. with Lee Michelle on stage last night. <laughs> <laughs> so he won't just like give up that name I'm for you? I'm kind of... Have you negotiated? Have you offered him like 100 bucks? No, or? but maybe I should. I mean, he could be Finnan. Yeah, be, That's a, exactly. good, a cool name. Yeah, or just, <laughs> just give me your Twitter No, he handle. could be Matt F. And Doyle. Yeah, that, That's go. what he could say. Well, that's is. what a lot of people, because I... Guess I don't know. Like people think that's what it means. Yeah, they're I like, just made that up. <laughs> they do, and they're like, "So does that stand for the F word?" I'm like, "No. Why would I do that?" Do you get hit on on Twitter with your ass pictures? And you're, you're also on Skivvies, as you mentioned. You did a Skivvies yes, performance on I YouTube, did. I did. which is you're not the number one video, but it probably will be eventually. Uh, you did a whole sure. a whole medley in your undies. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twitter so, seems, so, but my, I feel like my boyfriend gets hit on a lot more than I do. Sometimes <laughs> well, because like, he was a he yeah. was a newsie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he was a standout newsboy. He's very good. He can dance really like high. Like yes. he can do crazy. <laughs> he spins a lot. He does crazy. <laughs> does he teach you any like dance tricks? No, I mean you just said you suck at dancing. I'm terrible. I'm absolutely terrible. Does he give and you tips? Like he, when he saw Book of Mormon, did he say like, "Hey"? I ask for them. I I do ask for them because I. I was so embarrassed when he was watching me dance for the first time. Just I, I mean, I'm the kind of person that like does same foot, same arm sometimes, like that right. uncoordinated. And um, and yeah, so he he gave me a lot of tips along the way, and just said like, just you know, make sure that you you do that. <laughs> did you always know that you would be? I mean, I don't know at what point you actually came out. Did you, did you have to like do a certain interview or something where you actually had to say it? No, I think it happened on your site, but I wasn't even oh, like... Oh, we, yeah. we outed you? Yeah, I think so. But Shut I, up. I wasn't really? Even, yeah, I, you guys did a... <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry? <laughs> I wasn't aware. <laughs> but you guys did a photo series. I, it's not like I cared. You guys did a photo series and um, just mentioned that I was going to meet my boyfriend afterwards and all of these fans like... I got like flowers at the stage door, like congratulations. Are you thanking me or angry at me? Yeah, well, some of them. I were got actually you some angry. flowers. No, some but I got. Of, oh, I'm not. Are you mad at me for oh, how God, we out no. you? Not at all, because I, I will admit, like when I started, like first day at Spring Awakening, I was uh -huh. like, gee, how do I handle that? Right. But after a little bit, it was like, well, when it comes out, it comes out. I don't really care. Right. And um, my personal view on it is that the less that I care about it, and the less that other people, you know, who are gay actors care about it, then right. the less everyone else will care. Right. I, I think the more you make a deal about it, either way, you know, is, right. is when it becomes an issue. And I just, I just try to stay completely upfront about everything because yeah. I don't think it's a big deal at all. I think it's so silly. And um, yeah, it, it, to me, it's a non-issue, but it also is nice to know that an article and out or just being yeah. able to freely speak about it could also help, you know, somebody in the middle of Ohio, <laughs> like, right. feel better about themselves right. and about their future. And are you making more music? I you, am. You have great yeah. albums. Thank and, you. Uh, are you, like, planning on doing gigs anytime soon? Yeah, or? definitely. It's something that I want to get back into. I mean, Book of Mormon really took over my life sure. for that year. Yeah. And um, I, I think that Will, my co-writer, and I are going to start gigging again this year, right after Jasper. So oh, cool. we'll probably do some shows. Do you think you uh, grew a lot during the, that year? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I grew a lot during that year. I think also all of the shows. Bye Bye Birdie, yeah. War Horse, they all taught me a lot of different things. I mean, yeah. Bye Bye Birdie was about... You know, being in a, in a, I was in the male ensemble dressing room and surrounded by just like some 
brilliant, brilliant guys who were in the ensemble, like John Tracy Egan, just right. teaching me, you know, mm -hmm. who had been the lead of the producers and just, you know, said, like, this is business, you know, like, you, you have to calm down. Right, right, right. <laughs> You've got a long life and right. career ahead of you, right. and, you know, he kind of, he whipped me into shape, and then working with the ensemble that was War Horse, just 35 actors on stage every single night, you, one minute you're you're one of the leads of the show, and the next minute you're rolling around on the ground as right. mud. And does Joey keep in touch? Oh ego, yeah, big ego Joey. That, yeah, that yeah. Horse, yeah. Huh? He's you know he's such a star. He was the matinee idol. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to compete. Yeah, Hard I know. Hard to compete. We couldn't compete with the puppets. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no one in that cast. Well, you are the matinee idol of Jasper and Deadland. That was my segue. There you uh, go. <laughs> everyone needs to check it out. It's a really Cool, different rock show, an amazing score. Maybe you're gonna record it? Yes, I think oh, awesome. I think so, yeah. Great, and it's playing so. through April 13th at the West End Theater, which is in a church on West 86th Street. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for it's having so, me. Oh, absolutely, so good to see this you. This is wonderful, it's good to see you too. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.